Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, episode two, <laughs> or well, I say episode two, phase two, and uh, phase two of phase two, because <laughs> yesterday we put the the main coats on our creation. Uh, sorry, not the main coat, the first coat on my creation, and this was I uh, got a camera issue today. Give me a second. Sound. I. Uh, Painted the blue angel you can see in the background there. I'm just trying to get this camera into the right position. And there we go. Uh, I painted this one last week. And uh, we got all that coated. We did that second coat. If you missed any of that, that is now getting edited. So you guys can check it out on the PS4. Uh, I am recording once again on the PS4. And we are live right now. So everything you do miss, you can watch back the whole full live stream if you wish. But I know it's about 50 minutes to an hour long. Uh, roughly on that, but uh, hi there in the chat. How are you doing there, buddy? Welcome, welcome to the uh, chat today. Just to quickly explaining what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, if you can't watch the whole stream, then I edit all that. But uh, today, because we're live, we're going to be painting this one as we did the first coat yesterday. And as you can see, there's loads of little spots all over it that uh, didn't exactly get like missed. It's just I didn't see them, or they just didn't get a coat because they're in a crack or something like that. So. We're going to be repainting this one again today. Not in the, the such a darker colours. We're going to pick the colours today. I kind of got an idea what kind of colours that I want to use. Round about purples, blues, and uh, things like that. I'm not sure what colour I might do the wings orange. Uh, similar to this orange here, but a little bit more oranger than the actual actual uh, colour you see there. But uh, yeah, we're going to be getting all of that done today. So uh, you bring your comments in. Otherwise, we're going to be listening to some more from the comic story, and we're going to be listening to the darker side of uh, the Super Sons, as uh, it's a more of a zombie type thing. So, if you're not a fan of zombies and you don't want to hear that kind of thing, turn your volume down, or just wait for the edit because all of that, all of this gets cut out, and I put a little load of um, other artwork and loads of other music over the top. If you have any music that you would like me to see, sorry, see here or put up onto my channel, please let me know either in the comments down below. Or you can let me know over on TikTok, or you can come over to Instagram and send me some links. I will accept Spotify, and I will accept something if you upload it to YouTube. But if you're going to send it over, you will have to send it over electro electronically. Otherwise, I've got no way of accessing that music. So, yeah, if you've got any, or if you've got any audiobooks or anything you're creating, I'd love to hear from it. I'd love to know about it. You can send them over to me, and uh, I may possibly give you a shout out. I've got something coming next week for some force. Num, num. So I'm apple chewy. Got something coming next week for uh, a customer and somebody who has decided that they would like something drawn by me and they're going to be moving into a pond of clay. But I'll leave that until next week. And don't forget, guys, if you want to find out and see that, you've got to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell for notifications on when I'll be live or if I've uploaded anything that's uh, from the lives. But again, if you want to watch the live stream, you can watch a whole live stream. But again, if you want to watch a recorded version, then I'm recording on the PS4. So without further ado, guys, let's get that playing. Basically, I'm talking to you, buddy, but uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for that thumbs up there. I am basically talking to you, but again, people will watch this back and they will watch streams back and before. So I like to give a little bit of an intro because that's the YouTube way. You give a little bit of an intro and then you start what you're doing. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Again, if you missed that, any of that, uh, the making of this, then you can get check it out. But if you missed any of this, making the same way as we've made wings and stuff, then you can definitely check it out in the uh, Creation Station playlist because everything gets dumped into there uh, for, towards artworks. But uh, yeah, if you want to, if you have anything for me to listen to, uh, I'm going to listen to my own personal comic story and stuff that I have been listening to, and uh, I probably won't talk and uh, too much because I kind of don't need to explain how to paint because it's kind of like there's the paint, put it on. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to be getting on with that. But I will leave the comments open. I'll leave anything you want to say in the back there. Or if anybody's watching back, you can still leave a comment down below. I don't know where to start, so I'm just going to start. Uh, I think I will start on the wings. Get a bit of red on there. Uh, maybe not the wings, actually, because that would be a bit more trouble, troublesome. Maybe we'll uh, start on the jacket. We're going to go purple with the jacket. We're going to go purple with the jacket. Couldn't really decide whether it'll be red or blue. So the jeans are going to be like a blue colour. 
His skin tone is going to be sort of a reddy color, and his maybe a purpley color, and then his. Uh, well, we'll find out because I haven't drawn this one. Normally, I would have a picture to work from, and I just sort of basically copy the colors. Uh, I was new paint, so I put in an old bag of paint, and I can't find the right one. Come here, you. Uh, I might put a little bit of glitter in there on his wings. I've got a little bit of glittery paint here. I'm actually not a bad idea. I might do that. Uh, I need that black there. I need probably that brown, maybe possibly some green. I don't know. We'll get them all out. There's the white, the new white, which I'll definitely need to mix with. Okay. We've got Davin's. We got dabbies, dabbers. Dab, dab, dabby, dip, dip, dippy, dip, dip, dab, dabbing in the in the comments there. What are you dabbing for? Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for some juice because my phone's really dry. I don't want to throw it all through while I'm talking. So while I'm doing all that, you can get a little sneak peek to what we're going to be listening to in the live stream today. So give me a second, I'll press that. Welcome back to Deceased, right here at Comic Story. My name is Benny, and I'll be your narrator for this audio drama of this chapter of Deceased. The Deceased universe is an alternate reality in which the anti-life virus created zombies on the Hello, planet, killing man. many of the heroes. The main storyline has already concluded, and we moved into the second part of it. But the storyline, Deceased, Hope at World's End, is a series of short stories telling you the side stories of things that happened during the original adventure. Today, we'll be seeing what happened to the super subs. The Fortress of Solitude. John Kent lands in front of Cassie, telling her that he and his father were severing internet cables off the coast of Ireland. The internet is down, permanently. I'm gonna miss it, not the bit that turns people into agents of death, obviously, though. He tells her. Cassie rubs her forehead, a look of exasperation on her face. Look, I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, John, but I'm pretty sure that Damien just stole the invisible jet. Moments later, the two heroes pull up alongside Damien Wayne. You know what the problem with stealing an invisible jet is, Damien? John asks, looking at Damien, who seems to just be flying through the air while sitting. It's your visibility. Take it down, Cassie orders the young Batman. And Damien lands, stepping down the invisible stairs to stand beside his friends. Want to explain why your first act as Batman is Grand Theft Era? John asks. And Damien looks at them both, explaining that his mother is in Gotham. If I go back to the fortress, do you honestly think you can stop me from leaving? Damien asks John. Okay, I'm going to the first coat on. I'm going to mix some purple. John explains. So we need a bit Good of blue and I need you a bit of red. You can stop me from leaving. Mix those two together. I want to like a nice they're purple. They're going to go with him. They're going to find Talia Al Ghul. I'm going to be you think mixing that and uh, mixing that until I get the right the nice the tone of it. See. So later, as Down they here. enter Gotham airspace, Damien tells the others that his father was killed. A little bit of water first, mother. just to but wake your brush. interrupted as Cassie shouts at him. A zombified kite man rushes towards Damien, bent on his death. And with a splat, the villain smashes against the invisible jets and windshield like a giant bug. A dead kite man? Damien questions. Blood begins to smear as kite man slides down the windshield before plummeting to the streets below. Despite themselves, the young heroes begin to laugh. We have to remember to wash the Kite Man bits off the plane before we give it back to Wonder Woman. Cassie reminds them as they finally land. John finally asks why Damien and his father were keeping tabs on his mother, and Damien explains that she had arrived in the city with assassins to kill the mayor. I've missed something, haven't I? Cassie explains. My mother is Talia Al Ghul, daughter of Roz, the demon's head, leader of the League of Assassins. Damien quickly explains. It's kind of a sore subject. Don't really make a big deal out of it. John whispers to Cassie. Damien motions down to the Gotham City Bank below them, explaining that it is his mother's safe house. How is the Gotham Bank a League of Assassins safe house? Cassie asks as they leap off the building. Because my grandfather owns it, Damien tells her. At the entrance to the bank, they look in to see hundreds of blighted ones inside. Damien explains that his mother will be locked inside of the panic room underneath the vault. Before his friends can react, Damien leaps into action, throwing smoke grenades and batterings at the monsters. He's got hey, to watch your back, no worries. That costume, isn't he? Cassie notices. Catch your back whenever you can, buddy. We'll stay up on the, the channel, but it may take a, a couple hours after the live stream has finished, so you can watch the live stream back because of processing. But again, there will be an edited version on the PS4 coming out very soon. 
if Superman could just... Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell notifications. Give them much more time to discuss. As she tears open the wall quickly, revealing Talia standing with him, and around her, bodies of the monsters mm, are laying around too him. light there. Uh, Miss Al Ghul, we're here to rescue you, John tells her. Talia smiles, pulling her sword from the back of one of the monsters. From a pile of monsters I just murdered. Uh, yeah? Talia questions why Damien is with John, leaning into the young Superboy as he explains that Damien and is I'm giving him a bright red top. He's so innocent. We all can't be raised by assassins, mother. No, I suppose not. It's a shame, she tells him, before spinning around, motioning to his bat suit with the sword. And why are you wearing that? She asks. You know why, Damien tells her, looking at the floor. Shock fills her face, and she refuses to believe it. I'm going to go see him. You can come if you'd like. Damien offers his mother. And with that, the group is standing in the back cave, looking over the graves of Bruce, Dick, and Tim. Who buried them? Cassie asks. Jason Todd. I recognize the sentiment. Dick Grayson, brother, Nightwing, the one who got to grow up. Bruce Wayne, father, mentor, bastard, Batman. Tim Drake, friend, Robin, the best of us. The moment is interrupted, though, as John scans the room with his x-ray vision, the warning of an intruder behind the dinosaur. And that's when Stephanie Brown walks in. Hi. Spoiler tells them that she was hoping to find Batman. She comes forward and looking definitely down at Damien in another Batman coat. suit. Damien, but I don't mind so that. Sorry, she tells him, pulling kind of him into a hug. And for a brief moment, Damien is taken aback, his face showing the urge to fight against the feelings that are welling up inside of him. It's okay. You're wearing the mask and I've got you. You can say goodbye. Stephanie whispers in his ear. And with that, tears begin to roll down his cheeks as he lets the sadness overwhelm him. Your father made you soft, Talia hugs, and anger fills John and Cassie as they leap to their friend's defense. But Damien yells for them to stop, telling them that Talia loved his father and that she merely wishes to start a fight. There's nothing left here. Let's go back to the fortress, Damien tells them. The Steph tells him to wait a minute as she goes back into the shadows, returning to reveal her new costume. If you're Batman, you're going to need a Robin, she tells him with a smile. Another short story and another tear-jerking moment from Tom Taylor. His deceased storyline is incredible because it's not just zombies eating everyone that we know in the universe. It's it's just something that touches you. It's something special. It's just its own unique thing that I think we've all fallen in love with. The deceased universe and his portrayal of our heroes if the end of the world really was here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And don't forget, next week we'll bring you more deceased as this is pretty much becoming an every Tuesday thing between the normal issues and... And then the digital issues. And on top of that, we're also bringing you Death Metal, a big series happening right now. And we've got Empire starting up over in Marvel. So that's going to be kicking off real soon. I hope you guys are as excited about all of this as I am. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support you guys give us. And I'll see you next time right here. Okay. Well, while that stops, and I can quickly have a look what is available. Because that's the Super Suns. Uh, if you don't remember the Super Suns, Super Suns from last week, that's a bit of a different take, but you got an explanation about that anyway. Um, yeah, I'm now just sort of slapping on the second coat. It's going to need a third, just so I can cover up the darkness. But the reason I did the darkness first is so that none of the light and the white from the clay would show through, and only the colours would pop, because what I had a problem with the previous one here that I made, it, um, it took, well, I went light, then I went dark, then I went light. I should have done dark first to get rid of all the white, and then I wouldn't have had so many coats. Um, but yeah, this, because it was all one color, I'm just going to go over and uh, color the whole thing. I might give it a few coats because it may dry, because I'm only kind of putting it on thinly. Uh, but uh, kind of that's what I'm going with, the colors. And if I don't like the colors, I can always change them when I give them, well, not change them, but make them darker and such when I uh, actually... Um, do the actual uh, main prime coat. Or oh, I say prime, this primer, but you know what I mean. Hopefully you do. Because I can't waffle. I don't know what to say. Waffle, 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 waffle. I was kind of going to go for a, like, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, like a burnt look. But I thought that would be quite difficult so I'm sticking with some stuff I already know with this one just so I'm because it's the second coat I can always go in with a little bit more detail here and there 
when I do the rest of it. Or when I give it another coat. It's already get, it's already allowing me to put other coats on top. So it, mm, you might get a decent bit of purple here today. Who knows? Who knows? Says who knows? What colour skin should I make him? My son never got back to me on what colour he wanted the skin. He told me what he wanted to he wanted it to wear, and that's why it has a skateboard. But he never actually told me what uh, colours to use. So I'm kind of like, uh, I use this colour. Does this look gonna look good? Does this colour look good? Would this colour look good there? Give me, I was going to pop that down there for a second to get to see what's going on. Uh, purple, I think, uh, um, it's going to be very colorful. Let's just say that. I don't want it to be like, oh my god, that's too many, too much color going on there. So we'll see what I can for his face. I don't know. Just going to find something to listen to a second. You can leave some comments in there if you want there, buddy. I know, is uh, Pineapple Man still here? As we're on the Super Suns, we may as well listen to the, what we listened to last week, I think. Minus the average, obviously. Remember, Sam, every parcel is... Tim looks over his okay, we're continuing on where we left off last time. They remember it. Into the wall, but before he can check it out. Into it, his arm begins to become distorted. He shouts as he tries to regain control of his body, stating that hyper time is trying to pull him back again, but he can't leave yet. He's got to keep together. He focuses, flexing his arm until the distortion goes away and quickly fires the hook into the connecting ink. Once he crosses the gap, he opens the window to Jonathan's room, jumping and firing two trank darts into the bed. Tim then grabs the blanket so that he can secure Jonathan, but as he pulls back, he sees that Jonathan is already gone. Lois hears the noise opening the door, asking if everything's all right, but that's when she sees Batman standing there. Tim shoots another trank dart into her neck, telling her, shush. Meanwhile, over in New York City, Damien and his team Titans battle against the villains known as the Hangman. Damien calls out that they don't have to hold back on these assassins. And just as he says that, each Titan begins to get taken down. Just before the villains can finish the Teen Titans off, there's a red blue blur that shoots by, bouncing into each of the five Hangmen. Only a minute later, Gar tells Wally that that was a good job he did taking out Breathtaker. Gar says that he wasn't the one to provoke. He was busy with Shocky. Little Jiu-Jitsu mixed in with his secret tactics. Starfire says, wait. If Kid Flash and Beast Boy didn't stop them, then who did? Damien pulls out a small flare and he fires it into the air, telling Starfire to do him a favor. The flare goes off in the sky and someone begins to cough, and Damien finishes, stating, Catch Superboy. A second later, Jonathan comes crashing down onto Starfire, and as she catches him, she tells him not to worry, she has him. Later at Titan's Tower in San Francisco, Damien tells Jonathan that they've been over this before. He's not a Team Titan! That is, unless a majority vote is passed. Jonathan says that after the crack load stuff, he promised he'd take him on a mission once a month. That was three months ago, Damien! Starfire asks him if that's true, and Damien says that, I never officially said that. I only said that I would keep you focused. And Jonathan yells, so you lie! You never had any intention of bringing me! But just then a voice comes in over the intercoms, telling them that he has full control over Titan Tower. There's no escape from this room. Gar looks back and sees Tim on the screen asking, is that Batman? And Damien tells him, it is most definitely not. That's Tim Drake! Only older from a different timeline. Raven asks, "Why didn't you mention right, this as the Teen Titans?" And Damien tells him, "On his trousers." Family problem. Tim gained control of systems. Maybe we'll start getting some color. Design. That being said, he's here for one thing, and that's to prevent a future that he knows is gonna come. Tim tells Raven, "Go ahead, project my memory so that they can all see that I'm telling the truth. That way, they know it to be genuine. Images begin to appear." Again, we're just kind of Tim, slapping it on. And Lines are crossed, actions are taken. And then it flew into the sky, unleashing an like. blast. Mark there was the destruction, stream. suffering, and millions of dead. Jackson Hyde asks, What did we just see? And Raven explains that it was a video. Sorry, gosh, not so good angles. Again, this will be this war. is recorded. Tower, and I am editing. So you get better angles. And that's better visuals. Just without the uh, comic John. story in the background. And while he runs to the door, he's electrocuted, knocked away. Starfire quickly begins to blast the liquid off, 
But the more that John fights against it, the more it begins to cover him. As panic begins to set in, John shouts, asking for someone to help him! And his eyes begin to flare. And Tim says, no, it's too soon! And John shoots an uncontrollable heat blast from his eyes. Damien shouts, let's get out of here! Why with everything you've got or it's gonna kill us! Jonathan rockets through the building, telling Damien, tell my mom and dad I'm sorry! And John climbs higher into the sky, with his powers beginning to erupt, releasing a powerful explosion. Raven quickly creates a barrier, telling Wally to strengthen it with the speed force. But as the energy begins to come back, it blows up the entire tower roof. Meanwhile, in a different time and place, three people watch on a monitor. And as it pings, the woman says, Tim's cloaking device has been disrupted by something massive. And one of the men asks, Cassie, is he dead? She responds, stating, she can't get a read on his vitals. And the man then says, what should we do, Connor? And Connor says, when Titans do bark, we find them and we bring them home together. As Titan Tower begins to burn to the ground, the blast knocks all of the Titans out except for Damien and Tim. Tim gets up looking around, telling him, my cloaking device has been damaged in the blast. But this is the prototype Titan uniforms. Maybe I could use them to forge a new identity and become untraceable again. Damien, though, begins to back up, checking the computer to see the vital signs of the other members. The computer tells him that there are life signs for all of the Teen Titan members. Though unconscious, they are strong and accounted for. Damien then asks to give him the location of Superboy now. And moments later, Damien takes his submarine and goes into the water to pull Jonathan out. All the while, Tim is working on his new costume, stitching together many of the prototype suits. He says, from the rising sun came a bat out of hell, but I am now savior. Back with Damien, he begins to head out, and he asks Jonathan if he's all right. Jonathan sulks, telling him, no, what if I had hurt someone? And Damien says, just relax. I checked the vitals. Everyone's fine. Unconscious, but you didn't kill anyone. What happened to you wasn't your fault. You were pushed to the edge. But the Titans aren't the problem right now. It's Tim Drake. He had every intention of killing Batwoman if he hadn't been pulled out of our timeline. We'll do the same thing to you. Damien then starts working on the computer, and Jonathan asks, Are we trying to reach with the comm link? And Damien tells him, Our fathers, even though I said I would never call them, they should know that Drake is back. But I can't reach them either. Jonathan begins to look around himself, asking, What was that anyway? That power? Where did it come from? And Damien says, I'll look into Batman's okay, files. So we've got the I know blue Superman has a solar flare. It's definitely going to need another coat, like but it's control uh, and use for getting there. You. Given the mixed DNA, you might not be able to control it with your father. Jonathan Give it a couple minutes to dry off. We're at 22 minutes, so we're not looking too bad. Damien tells him, I won't let that happen. We're gonna keep you safe. Now we're going to go Jonathan real, real colourful with, with the wings. Friends are supposed to help each other. Right? And Jonathan says, I don't know we what to do for partners. space. Damien tells him, shut up. Later at Titan Tower, Wally will like the entire building looking for Damien and John. I don't know, maybe a red. Note stating, Give me time. Signed R. Raven tells him that she could have told him they weren't there. That and Tim Drake is also standing directly behind them. As everyone looks back, they see Tim as savior, with his guns pointed right at them, telling them, I'm willing to talk. Raven tells him if he says so, he could holster his weapons. Even though they're from different timelines, they still share an emotional connection. Tim tells everyone, we don't have much time. There isn't much left of my suit after Superboy went all Kira on us. So from here on out, call me savior. But as you can see, I'm not the bad guy here. The scariest thing that you all witnessed was just a small representation of what Jonathan Kent is capable of when pushed. And Jackson tells him, yeah, by the looks of it, it was you doing the pushing. Tim says, that's right, and he barely knows me. Imagine what would happen if someone close pushed him. Orange. I've seen it. Thanks to Raven, so have you. Even Robin did, and he chooses to keep Superboy away from us. And Starfire corrects him, stating, no, from you. Tim tells her, no, I mean them. If we don't do something, there's going to be a future generation unborn due to what Superboy does. Wally then asks, what does he mean by do something? And Tim calmly tells everyone, we have to terminate him. Starfire tells him to say the word. She wants him to say it out loud so that everyone knows what he's implying. And Tim says, we have to kill Superboy. And if Damien gets in the way, we have to kill him too. Jonathan asks, what if we get in your way? And Tim tells him, I'll do what I must. The Starfire then says, we will too. Gar separates the two of them, stating, let's dial it down, the drama here for a second. First, no one's going to kill anyone. However, I am inclined to believe Tim's motivation, given Superboy's little fireworks show. Raven then says they'll depower him so that they can contain and help him. Those are the options for someone who hasn't unleashed his powers to commit a crime. If Tim can agree to these terms, they'll help him. After a few moments of silence, Tim says, I agree. But if we're going to do something, we have to leave now. Starfire tells him, Robin said to give him time, so we're going to give him time. However, at that exact moment, the hyper time begins to pull away at Tim's arm. And as his hand disappears, it starts to appear somewhere else. Over in Titans of Tomorrow headquarters, a blue light shines over the room and Cassie shouts that the time phase is activated. Just then, Tim's hand begins to appear and Bart quickly grabs a hold of it, trying to pull Tim back. 
However, as Bart pulls, he tells everyone that it's pulling them in. And in the current time, Tim shouts in pain, telling everyone that the people from his time are coming for him. Starfire wants to give Damien time, but we don't have it. We have to do something now, Raven. Guard yells that they need to help Tim. They have seen his cards. Once they get Superboy, they'll sort this all out. Starfire sees Raven focusing her power and fires a blast, telling her not to do it. But as Raven opens up her eyes, she says she has to. In a flash of light, Raven disappears with both Gar and Tim, and Wally says they did it. They're gone. And Jackson tells them not to worry. Superboy gives off a distinct energy signature, and they're surrounded by water. And when he looks into the water, he can find exactly where Damien and Jonathan are. After searching in the water, Jackson follows the trail left by Jonathan to energy and finds an underwater structure. Jackson radios back that he's at the location where Damien took Jonathan. So when they're ready, hit it. Up above, Starfire and Wally hover in the Titans jet, telling them that they're coming in hard and fast. Meanwhile, over in Damien's makeshift hideout, the computer warns that there's an incoming attack. He yells to the computer to arm itself with non-lethal weapons. Take out whoever's out there! And seconds later, Starfire aims the jet down, flying it into the water, crashing into Damien's hideout. Once the jet is lodged in without leaking water, Starfire and Wally jump out and they begin to make their way through the facility. Just as the Titans start to move in, both Jonathan and Damien spring out of the vents, ready to attack, with Starfire telling Damien to wait. But Damien fires his grappling hook and wraps it around Jackson Hines. Jonathan then shoots by, grabbing Wally's leg out from underneath him and says, I'm really sorry I have to do this. And then Starfire fires a blast into Jonathan, allowing Wally to free himself to take on Damien. Damien shouts to Jonathan not to hold back his punches. We need to stop them from taking you. And then Wally runs circles around Damien, and just as he stops, he grabs Damien from behind, telling him that he made a mistake letting him get close. And Damien says, no, you did exactly what I wanted you to do. This gas is something special that I've been working on in case we have to fight evil speedsters. I call it slow-mo. Jackson continues to struggle with the grappling hook, but as he flexes his muscles, he breaks free, shouting, I've had enough of this. He creates two water spouts that shoot out of the ground, crashing into Damien and Jonathan, ultimately stopping them from attacking. As the two boys sit down, Starfire asks, now can we please talk? And Damien tells her, we're not handing Jonathan over. Wally tells him, yeah, neither are we. And Jackson then adds that Raven and Beast Boy chose a side. Just didn't happen to be theirs. After a few minutes of explaining their plan, Damien shouts, asking, is it the best you can think of, knocking them out? And Starfire tells him, yes. It's the only way that Raven could not track you guys. Wouldn't you agree, Superboy? Damien continues to yell, but Superboy punches and knocks them out. He says, actually, I don't agree, but before you knock me out, here's the coordinates of the fortress. It's the safest place that I can think of. Jonathan holds up his fist and says, I'm not exactly excited about this. Just make sure to add some speed to this, Kid Flash. Wally grabs Jonathan's fist and tells him, sure, no problem. And then crack! A short while later at the Fortress of Solitude, Jackson and Wally move Damien and Jonathan inside. And after grabbing a piece of ice, Jackson changes it to water to wake them up. Damien wakes up shouting, what the heck? No smelling salts, Andy? And as the two of them get up, everyone looks around at the destruction. Starfire says that she hates to say it, but it doesn't appear that this is okay. the fashion of safety. One kind of orange on. Damien says that he knew they should have come here, but while Jonathan flies around, he notices something outside. He rushes out there to find his father, Superman, still trapped in the cage that Tim had set up for him. He touches it, asking what happened, and Superman tells him to get back. Powers will be weakened if he gets any closer. Jonathan hits him with his heat vision, trying to free his father. But as everyone gets closer, Superman tells them to get Jonathan away. He then tells Jackson to push this chamber under the ice. The only way. As everyone gets to pull Jonathan away from his father, he screams, Let me go! Once I'm a safe distance away! And once he's a safe distance away, Superman tells Jackson to do it. Jackson places both of his hands on the ground, and the ice begins to splinter. Superman tells him, you have to be brave. As Jonathan watches the cave fall yeah, like an ugly, surface, but he screams, I knew it would. a wave of energy below the surface. The pressure I knew I'd need to, uh, is enough to break it, allowing Superman another to Another coat of other things on, so I'm going to put a uh, coat on but his... Jonathan Denker, he can't back. hear him. He thinks his fault. I'm going to put another coat on his... Uh, legs and such maybe today i think i've got enough time to get that bit more purple on there but i want to do a little bit more on the wings first but we're too too much purple because it's going to be um yeah just keep i'll keep lacquering onto the same thing and keep getting the same spots where i don't know if you can see just lift him up here quickly um as i'm painting it i'm touching the actual um Shirt sure, itself, so I've got orange pretty much everywhere there. But that I did ha that happened last one, so I uh, kind of prepared for that one. That's why I've only put one coat on, and when I put the second coat on, that orange should disappear. But I want to kind of do the coat of the wings again. So what I might do is that uh, let everything dry a second. Um, 
but I do need to do some on the hands. The circus here is thumbs falling off, which I'm not too happy with, but I think that's because of the way I made it. Made it too thin. I'll remake it because I want to make a little chain frame as well, like I did for the Blue Angel for the Blue Angel here. A little chain to sort of hang off his wing or off his neck or maybe his hand or something. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to make a weapon for this one because I'm going to call his skateboard the weapon. I'm going to move him back so you can actually see the skateboard there. And the uh, yeah, the skateboard is the idea. This is morning skate. If you ever heard of the word, um, what's the word? If you ever heard of morning, oh the morning star, the morning star. Look that up. It's or he up or it up, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like based on that idea. On the morning star, but this is morning skate. My my wingman and uh, blue blue or blue wingman to uh, game and uh, survey the world. Yes, that's my son. Okay, that was something falling down. We'll ignore that because it's just my skateboard, uh, which I'm going to be painting in the summer. I get. Uh, I'm not going to. It's not. My son's got a skateboard ramps and stuff near him, so uh, I've said to him I'd uh, paint his skateboard for him. So that'll be something coming again. In the summertime again don't forget to hit the subscribe button ding the bell for notifications i know some of you've left some likes there already so um, thank you very much for those and uh yeah awesome thank you very much for those thumbs up um but uh is there anybody here that wants to leave a comment i know there is at least a couple people so yeah let me know what do you think of it so far it's looking quite in a rough but so did uh angel Oh, excuse me. That's it for that. All right, while I'm waiting for that to dry a second, I'm going to let, listen to some more of this and let you bring in some comments if you wish. Other is gone. He thinks that Tim did this, and he thinks he's about to kill millions. Superman tells everyone that Jonathan is in some sort of trance. He's creating some kind of emotional superstore. Just then, Raven appears with Gar and Tim once she's got a lock on Jonathan's emotional level. But before they can even fully appear, Superman charges at Tim, asking him, What have you done? Superman squeezes on his head, and Tim tells him, Same solar flare power that you do. But because he's half human, he can't control it. You have to let this happen. If Superboy dies here today, millions can be saved. But just then, there's another flash of light. And inside it is Connor, Cassie, and Bart, the Titans of tomorrow. Wally asks who's that, and Cassie tells them that they're here to bring back their teammate. While Bart tries to control Tim's hand, he says that this thing's got a mind of its own. And it led us to some kids that are about to go boom. As Jonathan's solar flare starts to gain power, Cassie uses her lasso to try to keep her from expanding. And tells everyone that they shouldn't be standing around. Titans together. Gar turns into a giant octopus, and he positions himself on the top of the orb. While Cassie tells Raven to try and contain the blast. Superman calls out to the flashes to start running counterclockwise so that they can try and reverse the polarity. But while everyone works together to try and stop Jonathan from going out of control, Superman looks at Tim telling him, I don't have time to do with you. I'm going inside of the flare and I'm going to get him out. But before he goes, Connor stops him telling him, wait, who's inside of there? And Superman tells him, my 10-year-old son Jonathan, I have to save him. Both Superman and Connor look at the ever-expanding orb and Connor says that they are going to save him. He failed him once. He's not going to let this happen again. They both race to oh, the center cheers, of the flare, and Tim feels himself being pulled back again I like by it. hyper time. And he says that they are willing to sacrifice themselves to save him. Damien then jumps in the back of Tim's head shouting, This is all your fault! You screwed up the timeline! And they're all going to be killed because of you! Tim throws Damien off, telling him that he knows what to do now. He'll save them all and take the power with him. Just then, as Tim's body is sucked into hypertime, he begins to absorb the blast, telling everyone to stop. He'll handle this. As the portal to hypertime opens, Tim is pulled inside along with the solar flare. And as the blast begins to fade, Superman picks Jonathan up. And Jonathan asks what happened. Superman tells him that he has made things right by giving all he had to save him. As the portal begins to close, everyone sees Tim inside and many events happening throughout time. But then in one last flash, that portal disappears. Everyone begins to get back up and Gar asks, what did they just see? And Raven tells them that they saw a version of Tim sacrificing himself for them. Wally then asks all those images, were they the past, present, or future? And Superman says that that's another question that needs answers. And all of this action, we've never been properly introduced. Who are you all and why are you wearing my S? Connor tells him that he doesn't know him yet. But once he told him that when it comes to time travel and alternate realities, the less they say and do, the better. Superman tells him, that sounds like good advice. We're very sorry for the loss of. But Cassie stops him, telling him, Tim Drake isn't dead. He's now everywhere and everyone. Damien then says that he has so many questions. 
This way they can learn about, but Cassie stops him telling him, that's exactly why we can't stay. Whatever is coming your way, you need to figure it out on your own. Jackson then asks, how are they going to get back? And Bart says that the residual I'm not reverse. Sure, well, on this says color, that but the same speed force that they it looks on, okay. It's a bit pink, but back, right? and Bart laughs, telling him, <laughs> dark enough, maybe. I just want to give it a contrast. Bart starts to race around, and Julie creates a portal for them to return home in. Once the three disappear, Gar says that he thinks he's purple. the blonde, which they had gotten names. And Wally smiles, telling him, I got something better than names, and he pulls out his phone, showing that he got a selfie. Pretty cool, right? Right before they phased out, little souvenir. Raven grabs the phone, blowing it up, asking, do you want to compromise the timeline in more lives? And Wally laughs, stating, you know, I can just re-download that from the cloud. And Raven snaps, this is not a time to be joking. A version of Tim Drake, someone that all of us are close to, just sacrificed himself in front of all of us less than a minute ago. And you want to smile and take selfies? While he sighs, telling her, I'm sorry. I really wasn't thinking. I just got caught up seeing another flash. Superman then directs Jonathan and Damien away, stating that it seems that they've got some things to clear up. Excuse us. And a short while later, back in Wayne Manor, Bruce begins to open up his eyes and he sees Alfred waiting with breakfast. He asks, how long have I been unconscious? Alfred pours him a glass of orange juice, telling him that he must have had a dream. Bruce says, dream. Uh, back at the Fortress of Solitude, Jonathan and Damien look at Clark, who's standing there for five minutes, thus saying a word. Damien whispers, what is he thinking about? This is all done. Can we go home now? And Superman tells him that he's not so sure that he agrees with everything being wrapped up. Jonathan points to his ear, stating, superhearing, remember? And Damien scoffs, stupid powers. Clark then says that he may have to reassess this partnership of theirs. Damien seems to be a catalyst for some far-flung future maelstrom that ends up engulfing my son. So Damien should understand my concern about you guys going out and doing your crime fighting. Damien says that they're talking about a possible future, not one set in stone. And Superman tells him, yes, but if you do something to make sure that it doesn't happen, as a father, he will stop. But Damien stops him and says, look, Jonathan's possible future is already altered the minute that Tim absorbed the solar flare. So I could swear that I will never put Jonathan in harm's way. And Jonathan says, that's right. Just like I'm going to protect Damien or whatever the world has in store for his possible future. So there's nothing to worry about, Pop. Staying close to Damien, being a friend in good times and bad is the answer. Not pushing him away. We're only going to learn by making our own choices. Superman smiles, asking, when did you get so smart? And Jonathan tells him, maybe it's because I listen to what you and Mom have to say all the time. As Damien and Jonathan head back outside, he asks Starfire what's going on. She says they need to have a meeting and talk about what just happened. Savior fractured them easily. It's important to speak about their feelings. And Gar says that it'll be hard since the tower's kind of blown up. And Jonathan tells him that he's really sorry about that. Superman says, don't worry. You can have a temporary headquarters until you get things back up. Initiate Justice League headquarters transport code for eight on my mark. Seconds later, everyone is teleported away and Superman welcomes everyone to the Justice League headquarters. Their meeting table is theirs to use. He'll be in the monitor room if they need him. All of the Titans walk over to the meeting table and as Jonathan walks away, Damien slams his fist down stating, meetings called to order. I move that we put Superboy up for vote to be a half member of the Teen Titans, later to be recognized as a full member when he turns 13 years of age. Before everyone can vote, though, Jonathan runs back, stating, I'm sorry, I overheard, but is there anything I can do to convince you? Damien gives him a thumbs up and says, that won't be necessary. Jonathan smiles, stating, okay, I'll let you get on with it then. Just then, Bruce walks up telling Damien that he would like a full report on everything that just happened. And what are you voting on? Damien says, whether or not Superboy can join the Team Titans. Bruce tells him, everyone go ahead and give me a show of hands. Damien puts his hand up, but no one else does. And Bruce says, the days have it. Sorry, Superboy. Starfire tells Jonathan that it's not about him, but how much they have to figure out about themselves. And Jackson adds that they really need to work on them as a team more than anything else. With Jonathan sighing, stating, right, I'll see you later then. As Jonathan walks away, Damien runs over, stating that he's sorry about that. And Jonathan tells him, it's okay. Thanks for having my back, though. And Damien says, hey. And they will connect the chat. Jonathan asks, strange. Friends, somebody right? trying to send Damien links. Asks, friends? You just had to ruin it, didn't you? And Jonathan says, sorry. But Damien pats Jonathan on the shoulder, telling him, don't be. It's going to work out very well for you if you send it next to that Reeves school, the young Jonathan Kent has a kickball thrown at his head as he makes his way to home plate. Jonathan continues to run and Georgia shouts that he's out. Why is he still running? And Jonathan calls back that headshots don't count. Those are the rules at his old school. And Georgia tells him that the new school, new rules, small town. But before the two of them could go on, a teacher comes out stating that they both have been warned about arguing at recess. Kickball is over anyway. It's time to clear the field and get back to class. Georgia sticks out her tongue, and as Jonathan gives her a fist bump, Jonathan asks, Pick up the inning tomorrow? Georgia tells her you know it. She'll give him his out this time, but is he coming to homework now? Jonathan tells her, Just a sec. He told his friend that he'd meet him by his bus. After getting changed, Jonathan heads out to the baseball field to see Alfred flying Damien by helicopter. Damien jumps out and he asks, 
you always have to meet me here every morning? And Jonathan tells him, when your friend comes to school in a helicopter? Yeah. The two begin to head to class, and Damien says, just so you know, our parents may be out of town, but we still have scheduled patrols. Jonathan tells him that he can't. He has homework to do, and Damien says, I'll do it for you. Georgia overhears and asks if Short Rounds is doing his homework now. And if he is, is he taking on more clients? Damien asks Jonathan to tell his Amazon friend to leave him alone. And Georgia runs off laughing, stating that Amazons are awesome. So his insult is denied. Jonathan laughs, stating that she's cool and totally falling for his regular guy act. Meet up for lunch? Damien tells him how about no. Does no work? And Jonathan says, all right, see you at lunch, buddy. As the two head off to their classes, Talia Al Ghul watches Damien and Sai stating that all of that potential is just wasting away. What is she going to do about their son, Bruce? Later at the lunch period, Jonathan and the other kids head out to the soccer field to play. But as Jonathan falls down, Georgia asks, what is he saying? Oh, I fucking so right now. The bleachers and sees Damien, <laughs> and then says that he'll have to catch up with him later. Jonathan runs over and asks Damien why isn't he, you know, more friendlier with everyone. Most of the kids here are scared of him. And Damien tells him, good, I didn't ask to be sent here. I was doing fine at home, away from all of this normalness. And Jonathan yells that no one is normal. You are better than anyone. Our dads go out every night and, but before Jonathan could go on, Damien tells him to be quiet. They aren't alone. Jonathan follows Damien down to the locker rooms and says that maybe he just heard a squirrel or something. Damien looks around stating, like hell I did, I heard. But before he could finish, Damien is grabbed and Jonathan readies his heat vision, telling whoever it is to come out now. Damien tells him, it's okay, it's my mother. She's holding a sword to my throat. Jonathan looks at Talia and asks, Your mother? And Damien asks Talia, I assume this has something to do with father. Talia tells him no. It's something that she needs from him. His bright-eyed, bushy-tailed friend may have to die, unfortunately. Damien kicks upward, freeing himself from Talia. But as she falls, she kicks Damien in the back, launching him into Jonathan. Jonathan catches him, and as he sets him down, he says... Your mom's okay. Nice. All right. Can you see his wings now? I know his wings. Sorry, do his horns. Because everything's getting getting fairly dry. But it, some of this, where I started, can be repainted now. So that's what we're aiming to do. We are getting up to the 50-minute point, so we'll see how that goes. And in it is his League of Assassins uniform. You're still allied with the League. She goes on stating that he is a weapon, one that she forged. This coming mission is delicate and requires the best, which happens to be him. Damien tells her that he has no intentions of ever turning his back on Father. They've been down this road. Talia holds her sword to his chest, telling him, I know, dear son, but it is only a matter of time. You are the grandson of the immortal Raz al Ghul. Death is in your blood. You can keep the sword. I've killed three men with it last night. Have a good day at school. Talia throws the weapon to the ground and walks away, with Damien picking it up, breaking the blade over his knee. And then him and Jonathan begin to leave. Later, over at Morrison Bay, Jonathan finishes changing, and Damien says that it looks like his mother is still using some of her Leviathan resources. He knows all of their vehicle GPS tracking codes, so following her won't be an issue. Jonathan says that he can't wrap his head around him being a... But Damien stops him, telling him, don't play dumb. You knew about my past. My mother is in our backyard. We need to go out and find out what she's up to. Later in Gotham City, a League assassin continues to keep watch on a building. Jonathan flies up asking if he's the one who ordered Uberfly. The assassin spins back, swinging at Jonathan's chest, and as the sword shatters on the hit, Jonathan says, that man is right. They always aim for the S. Damien then jumps down onto the assassin's sword, telling him, Hello again, Ezer. I always said that you were too easily distracted. Damien hits Ezer, and then Jonathan catches him, asking, Wait, you trained these guys? The two begin to make their way into the building, taking on the rest of the assassins. But as they fight, the assassins soon stop fighting back. One of them falls to their knees, yelling, Yield! The shadow falls to the ground in respect and honor to you, the demon's son! Jonathan asks, What the heck? Dude, who exactly are you to these guys? And the assassin says that he is the pinnacle of the line of Abu, the bringer of blood, the hunter of men, the demon's son, is a child with the demon's touch. Damien kicks the assassin away, telling him, you must have me confused with someone else. Jonathan then says, okay, I'm confused. These guys are scared to death of you. Exactly how many people have you killed? Damien heads over to the laptop, telling him, first, let's clarify that these people are killers themselves. And second, that was a whole other lifetime ago. Jonathan yells, you're only 13. But rather than listening, Damien gets to work on the laptop. After a few moments, Damien tells him, Oh no, my mother was sent here to find out about her targets. One of the people that she was hired to kill is your mother, Lois. A short while later, over at the Gotham Square Cafe, the man at the counter calls out, Two Americanos for Lois! Lois takes the coffee, stating it's Lois. She swears it's a real name. And just as Lois hands the coffee over to her friend, Chloe, her phone begins to ring. 
She looks at it and says that it's her son. Give her a few moments. She answers asking if everything's okay. And Jonathan, who's flying to her location at that very moment, says, Hey, Mom, uh, I may have butt-dialed you. I know I'm not supposed to call when you're on assignment, but while I have you, uh, where do you keep the dish soap under the sink? It That makes a lot of sense. Damia says that he has her exact location. She's at the Sun Dollar in Gotham Square. And Jonathan yells, All right! Gotta go! Be a good reporter! Or, like, whatever! Lois turns to her phone and says that she's sorry about that. Her son gets a little nervous when he's left alone. Just outside of the cafe, though, Talia positions herself on the building across the street with a rifle. As she begins to look down the site, she asks, where is her son? She made it obvious. Okay, the horn's crack, done. But if he doesn't show up... Still looking well, skacky, but it's looking Talia a lot better now with some color on. And now that I've got the, the idea where the color is going to be, um, but just before it can hit the window, Jonathan more happy with it. The bullet stating, after the speeding bullet, check. Talia looks down at the cafe asking, did someone deflect her shot? And then she radios to her team, telling them to find whoever did this and kill them. And tell her if anyone happens to see her son. As Talia looks down the site again, Damien swings up, kicking her away from the rifle, telling her, Hello, mother! She wipes the blood from her Because it's so tacking pretty much everywhere now, guys. What We're hitting up to 50, what happened? up to 46 minutes, so I'm going to pause distress. that there. Talia then asks, pause that there, so you, uh, you don't have to hear that. But again, we were listening to the Super Sun, Superboy and Robin, full story from Comic Story. Uh, they, again, they read out DC, Marvel, and... Pretty much any comic you can think of. They even do a little bit of anime. They got in trouble with the anime, so they're, they're, they're a bit scarce on that. But there's loads of DC, Marvel, or any kind of superhero you could ever thought of if you want to go and listen to their stories. Sometimes I listen to them when I go to sleep. Sometimes I listen to them when I draw. Most of the time I listen to them here on the channel. So if you want to check them out, they're always going to be on this channel. If you've got any stories that you want me to listen to or base a comic on or base anything on, then you can let me know in the comic section. But I know Mr. Pineapple Man. Uh, not this week, but next week I'll be starting on your illustration. Again, I'll leave uh, that a little bit uh, in kazoo because uh, I want you guys to find out what we're going to be doing next week. I'll start that next Monday and I'll give you guys hits and hints and tips on what I'm going to be doing about that on uh, Instagram and TikTok. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to have to let this dry and let it do its thing. And I will see you guys next time. So thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow, roughly uh, between, what time is it? So I started really late today. So I'll be roughly between uh, one-ish and three-ish. I would imagine I'd start streaming. That's all depending on the electric doesn't uh, go down again like it did today. That's why I'm a bit of late. But if uh, you did enjoy it, guys, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I know you guys have already. So I'll let uh, you guys have a quick peek and say don't forget to click those links that will appear if you're watching back and here is where we got to today again it's looking a bit skacky but that's because it's just a first coat over the darker layer you'll see what i mean tomorrow as soon as we get to tune in for that i really can't get a good angle on that so i'm going to get the best angle i can here's his horns and his skateboard, the way he's standing. You can get on the back of it without touching it too much. And the uh, tail and such, and his wings. And he's pretty much there. I'm not sure about the pink. We'll find out what color I actually pick. It's, once I let it dry and sort of go, hmm, don't know if I like that pink. It's looking a bit pink pank three. So, yeah, otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching. Click the links that will appear, and I will see you tomorrow for the last lick of paint.